Welcome to you all. And we begin this morning with our traditional Easter greeting. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Now, at the early service, I saved announcements, and yet I'm going to welcome you all. And um, some of us have been here for this morning's festivities, and this is our ending point. Some of you have just arrived, but we all come together now, um, and we worship together. Some of you that are using the digital bulletin will find some little pieces of the 7.30 service in there and just skip over them and look for what's marked as 9.30. It helped me to coordinate that together in one mailing because sometimes we get our stuff bouncing back if I put too much in your email together. If you are a visitor and you want our digital bulletin, go to our website. You can search for St. Paul Asheville and you will see uh, a tab at the top that says current digital bulletin and you can press on that and you'll be able to have something on your device if you don't like to fuss with the paper and on those digital bulletins we have all the words for everything and we don't even have to open and look for pages so that's there for you and um, otherwise we have paper bulletin in the back and um, we use our green hymnal primarily today. So we are welcoming as a new member and a renewed member, Evie and Steve Mabe today. And that's part of um, the traditions of Easter in the early church was that when you had new members, new, newly baptized, you welcomed them on Easter Sunday. So that's part of our morning today. And I'm so glad we get to have that ancient, ancient tradition as part of what we are doing in this time. So um, I think that's all I needed to say to you. Do we have prayer concerns that need to be shared this morning? Anyone? All right, I will, we will have time if we've thought of someone that we want to pray for. I'll, I'll make sure we pause for names in our in our hearts. So I think that's it then. What we'll want for the nine, this service, before we begin and um, start with our Thanksgiving for baptism, we're going to hear a prelude. Please rise for our thanksgiving for baptism. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed, alleluia. Christ is risen, alleluia. We too shall rise, alleluia. In the waters of baptism, we have passed over from death to life with Jesus Christ. 
And we are a new creation for this saving mystery and for the water. Let us bless God who was, who is, and who is to come. We thank you, God, for this river of life. I am struggling too much without my glasses. I left them. They're on me. Good. We see the humanity that Christ needs to redeem. So, we thank you, God, for your river of life flowing freely from your throne through the earth, through the city and countryside, through every living thing. You rescued Noah and his family from the flood. You opened wide the sea for the Israelites. Now in these waters, you flood us with mercy, and our sin is drowned forever. On this day of resurrection, you open the gate of righteousness, and we pass safely through. In Jesus Christ, you calm and trouble the waters. You nourish us and enclose us in safety. You call us forth and send us out. In lush and barren places, you are with us. You have become our salvation. Now breathe upon this water and awaken your church once more. Call your beloved and holy people to the resurrection life. Quench our thirst, cleanse our hearts, wipe away every tear. To you, our beginning and our end, our shepherd and lamb, be honor, glory, praise, and thanksgiving, now and forever. Amen. We're going to sing together, Jesus Christ is risen today. It's number 151 if you are using the green hymnal, or it's printed in your digital bulletin. Jesus Christ is risen today, hallelujah, our triumphant holy day, hallelujah, who did once upon the cross, hallelujah, suffer to redeem our lives. Hymns of praise, then let us sing, Hallelujah! Unto Christ our heavenly.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. We sing together for our hymn of praise, This is the Feast. It's part of our liturgy, page 81 in the front of the green hymnal, where it's printed for those of you who are online. <clears throat> This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia. Worthy is Christ, the Lamb who was slain, whose blood set us free to be people of God. Power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and blessing and glory are his. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia. Sing with all the people of God and join in the hymn of all creation. Blessing and honor and glory and might be to God and the Lamb forever. Amen. This is the feast of victory for our God, for the Lamb who was slain has begun his reign. Oh, alleluia, alleluia. Let us pray. God of mercy, we no longer look for Jesus among the dead, for he is alive and has become the Lord of life. Increase in our minds and hearts the risen life we share with Christ and help us to grow as your people toward the fullness of eternal life with you through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated and we'll listen to a reading from Isaiah. Good morning. Good morning. Our first reading today is from the book of Isaiah, chapter 65. For behold, I create new heavens and a new earth, and the former things shall not be remembered or come into mind. But be glad and rejoice forever in that which I create. For behold, I create Jerusalem a rejoicing and her people a joy. I will rejoice in Jerusalem and be glad in my people. No more shall be heard it in, in it the sound of weeping and the cry of distress. No more shall there be in an infant that lives but a few days or an old man who does not fill out his days. For the child shall die a hundred years old and the sinner a hundred years old shall be accursed. Then shall build, they shall build houses and inhabitate them. They shall plant vineyards and eat their fruit. They shall not build and another inhabit. They shall not plant and another eat. For like the days of a tree shall the days of my people be, and my chosen shall long enjoy the work of their hands. They shall not labor in vain or bear children for calamity. For they shall be the offspring of the blessed of the Lord and their children with them. Before they call, I will answer. While they are yet speaking, I will hear. The wolf and the lamb shall feed together. The lion shall eat straw like the ox. The dust shall be the serpent's food. They shall not hurt or destroy in all my holy mountains, says the Lord. Here ends the first reading. Our psalm for today is Psalm 118, 
we're um, reading verses 1 and 2, and then we switch um, down to verse 14 and end at 24. That's on page 272 in the front of your green hymnal, and we will read that responsively by verses. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His mercy endures forever. Let Israel now proclaim his mercy endures forever. The Lord is my strength and my song, and he has become my salvation. There is a sound of exultation and victory in the tents of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord acts valiantly. The right hand of the Lord has triumphed. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord has triumphed. I shall not die, but live and declare the works of the Lord. The Lord has punished me sorely, but he did not hand me over to death. Open for me the gates of righteousness. I will enter them. I will offer thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. He who is righteous may enter. I will give thanks to you, for you answered me and have become my salvation. The same stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. On this day, the Lord has acted. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Second reading today is from 1 Corinthians chapter 15. If for this life only we have hoped in Christ, we are of all men most to be pitied. But in fact, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For as by a man came death, by a man has come also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, so also in Christ shall all be made alive. But each in his own order, Christ the firstfruits, then at his coming those who belong to Christ. Then comes the end when he delivers the kingdom of God, the Father after destroying every rule and every authority and power. For he must reign until he has put all of his enemies under his feet. The last enemy to be destroyed is death. Here ends the second reading. Please rise. Hallelujah. Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Hallelujah. The Holy Gospel according to Luke the 24th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. On the first day of the week, at early dawn, the women came to the tomb, taking the spices that they had prepared. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb, but when they went in, they did not find the body. While they were perplexed about this, suddenly, Two men in dazzling clothes stood beside them. And the women were terrified and bowed their faces to the ground. But the men said to them, Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here, but has risen. Remember how he told you while he was still in Galilee, that the Son of Man must be handed over to sinners and be crucified, and on the third day rise again. And then they remembered his words. And returning from the tomb, they told all this to the eleven and to all the rest. Now it was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary the mother of James, and the other women with them who told this to the apostles. But these words seemed to them an idle tale, and they did not believe them. But Peter got up and ran to the tomb. Stooping and looking in, he saw the linen cloths by themselves. 
And then he went home amazed at what had happened. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may go ahead and be seated. We have message for our young people, but the first thing we need to do, um, and we remembered this, we discussed this earlier, girls, didn't we? That um, that we had hidden the Alleluia at the beginning of Lent. And we sure pulled it out already this morning, didn't we? We've been singing hymns with Alleluia. We've been saying Alleluia. And we found the Alleluia we hid at the beginning of, the Lent, of Lent at the last service. Now, the girls said they were going to hide it for me again, but then they got busy taking their picture. And so I hid it. I hid it. And I want us to see if we can find the Alleluia because it's what fits with today. So you guys see if you can go find where I hid it. All right? So if you're little, you are welcome to go searching. It is in this room. Don't worry. We don't have to go outside. There's always someone that wants to try that. Oh, now you guys have to do something. No, you guys are very cold. Yeah, because that's where your pictures were being taken, so I did not hide it near there. But that is the last time we looked at it, wasn't it? So let's, Mary Ann's giving it all away. <laughs> you people are so lucky. Because if it was me, I would just make you work. All right. Yeah, my kids are like, yeah. All right, keep looking. You guys are getting warmer. You guys are getting warmer. You're, yay! So bring that on up there, and we'll show everyone what we just found. Yeah. And if you're a young person that wants to come up now, that's fine, too. What we find, we found our Alleluia again. And that's because of the story we told today. So let's go ahead and sit down over here. I think this is all we're getting for now. We have others are visitors. They're not really sure we're, we're friendly enough, I guess. So, okay, let's take a seat. Now... Um, we brought back the Alleluia because of this, the things we find out today on Easter Day. All right. Now, I want to ask you, before we say that, I want to ask a couple of questions. If we were running a race, um, what would we say? Oh, yes, yeah, Sadie. Oh, no, don't give it all away. What would, we, what would we say? And you told me this morning, what would we say if we start a race? So we say, ready, set, go. And then what happens when we go? You run. you run. And then we pass the finish line, which I've marked here. And is the race over then or does it still go on? It's over. It's over. All right. And if we're playing, she's Sadie, why don't you just do, my, do it for me? I'm all of a sudden tired and I'm like, Sadie can do this. Yeah, so we talked about this too. Sadie, tell us what we talked about with that. There's a beginning and there's an ending. Even on our games we play, isn't there? All right, and then when we read books, we start We start and do what? And then you get to the end and you're done with the book. Yeah, well, the reason we say hallelujah today is because when we saw Jesus crucified, we thought that was the end. And a lot of his friends did too. They were like, this story's over. And let's just be sad. This story is all done. And yet the women who went to visit at the tomb this morning, um, that's what our gospel lesson told us. They were like, this is the end. And then they found out that it wasn't the end because they found the angels there. And the angels, the big, powerful men there, what did they say? Did they say Jesus is here? Jesus is not here. He is risen. 
He is risen. And we've said that a number of times and we say, Alleluia. We're, Alleluia, Lord. To whom? We got that song back, didn't we? We did. So what we found out is that with Jesus, the story wasn't over at all. Jesus has more to share. And Jesus, when we come back for church next week and the week after, Jesus will come and talk to his disciples and he'll show them his wounds but Jesus is alive. And we sing, Alleluia, the story's not over because Jesus is still living among us with risen presence. So let's pray and then we'll head on back. All right, let's, why don't you guys repeat after me? Dear Jesus, we are happy that your story goes on. We are happy your story goes on. Alleluia. Alleluia. Amen. Okay. And there's more to it. We're going to keep on. We have more to talk about this Easter season. Wait. What? No, he didn't come today. Yeah. I bet you he went to Easter services on Zuratok with his family. I'm, I don't know. Whatever we think. Have you noticed that? We get to think up whatever we want the green puppet to say. Yeah, or someone's going, oh, yeah, we got all kinds of ideas. Good. You guys are thinking the right way that we can be creative because that's what this is about. All right. You guys head on back to your seats and we're going to continue. All right. You get a little comfortable at church once you've been here all morning. and It's why I act the way I do sometimes. It's like, this is such a comfortable place. Not a formal, mean place. All right. Would you pray with me? Dear Lord Jesus, your risen spirit is set free in this world and you have called this gathering together. You called our gathering earlier this morning. You called us together at breakfast and to celebrate with an egg hunt and you called us together to worship. Um, and it is, it is a wonder that we remember this story year after year And we remember it day after day because it is the proclamation that Jesus is risen that transforms a broken world. So I thank you that you have called us together to remember that together once again. I ask that you be with me as I preach and I ask that my voice be strengthened. Let me be filled with your spirit. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay. I have some repeat people here. You guys just do what you need to during, okay? (laughs) Especially Sadie. (laughs) She remembers everything I say word for word. All right. Okay, let's be honest together this morning. Um, You guys are the later crowd, but doing the Easter morning thing can be kind of stressful, and and doing the whole Holy Week thing can be stressful for a pastor, and we forget things. And I just, I did not intentionally put the forgetting of my glasses in the begin at the beginning of our service, but that's what it's like. The other day, Um, Good Friday service, we needed my phone to stream the service, and sure enough, at 7 till, I'm sending Ben home to go get the phone that was charging that I'd forgotten, and um, so I am a person that's quite forgetful short-term-wise, many of of you know that, and um, I saw this online, I've reached the age when my train of thought often leaves the station before me. So there's a fun little thought. So what about you? What did you have to run back to the house and get this morning? Is anyone with me on this? 
or no, none of you. Oh, good, a volunteer, yes. We <laughs> had to run back. What'd you have to run back and get? Your keys. So, yeah, um, we forget things. Um, this morning, I asked that crowd, do you all have your pants on and do your shoes match? So we didn't have anybody that did that. So they managed to get here that way. Um, so we come to Easter morning and we expect and we know we're going to hear that story of Easter read from our Gospels. And this morning we got to hear from Luke and we feel like something's been forgotten because Jesus does not show his beautiful face at all in that resurrection story. He doesn't show up. Instead, we get to look at Easter morning from the perspectives of Jesus' followers, which Luke wants us to think about. That's you too. You are the ones approaching and seeing things this Easter morning. So instead, what we see are disciples like us who experience a surprise um, because they're expecting something else. They're expecting that as they arrive at that tomb that they are going to care for a broken and wounded body and they are going to give care and love to a beloved friend they have lost. And that's what they expect. And we know they expect this because we hear about those women that they've not forgotten the spices. They brought those along. They knew they had to have them. And in that culture, it would have been spices and ointments that you would have used to clean and care for that body that has died. So they had waited on the Sabbath. And now they've come with the spices. Now, grief tends to cripple our memories. Those of you that have experienced grief and the loss of a loved one um, know that everything just leaves your head at that time. But for those women, caring for Jesus in death was making, it was there at the forefront of their minds. And so they're heading out and they have not forgotten the spices. They've not forgotten those. And that made sense. That made perfect sense to them. But then things stopped making sense. They stopped making sense. Um, they get there and their heartache deepens. Can you imagine? You've come to care for the body and your heartache deepens because the body's not there. And your confusion grows and you discover something that you did not imagine. And then frighteningly, these otherworldly men appear and they're there with questions, okay? And you're a little group of women expecting to do a very hidden act because Jesus is this perceived criminal and there you are out in the darkness and all of a sudden they're here and they have questions for you. They look at you and say, why do you look for the living among the dead? Now that can seem kind of accusatory. And so the women fall to the ground. Luke says they're terrified. They don't know what to do. Oh my, it is not a good morning. Terror is rising. And then these otherworldly creatures go on to say something else. Jesus is not here, but has risen. And then they go on and say, remember, remember this. Remember how he told you he was still, when he was still in Galilee, that the Son of Man must be handed over to sinners and be crucified and on the third day rise again. So they've remembered the spices. They've remembered that they're going to find death. But these angels say, remember what he told you. Remember what he told you while you were in Galilee. And I believe that that's for us too. 
when we are in that space and place where things are falling apart, where there's death and death seems to have that last word and that finality and violence is breaking out everywhere across our world and we think, what next? And they come to us and say, remember. Remember what he told you while he was in Galilee. Remember what you know about God's plan and God's arc of love that leads to healing for this world. Remember. We often remember the spices. We often remember that. Sometimes we forget what we were told by Jesus in Galilee. So remembering matters on Easter Day. It did for those women, and it does for all of us. There's a scene at the beginning of Alex Haley's novel, Roots. Um, it's been around for a long time. It's been televised. Um, there's Quinta Kinte lying on the floor of his slave cabin. He once was a proud free man, but he's gone through the horrors of the slave ship, the auction block, and now he is enslaved. And he has lost all memory of his native land and his life there as a free and proud man. But the scene then continues on where Kunta Kinte hears singing from one of the other cabins. And it is singing that at first seems really strange, but then it's irresistible. And he is tuned into that song. And it's a song from Africa. And it awakens inside of him that part that has died, that part that he's lost. And his deepest soul responds and he remembers who he is. He remembers all that he was and who he really was still. And he weeps, and it says that it's in wonder and in joy he weeps. So remembering mattered for Kunta Kinte. Even more profoundly, remembering matters this day for those confused and frightened women hearing the words of the strange men in dazzling white. They say, remember how he told you. Remember. And miracle of all miracles, and I don't know if you catch this because it was so fast. Verse 8 of the gospel says, Then the women remembered his words. They remembered his words. They remembered those words that they had been told and they knew the Son of Man must be handed over to sinners and be crucified. And on the third day, rise again. That memory got stirred in them and it was stirred in their deepest souls and they remembered who they are. They remembered that. They were and are beloved friends of Jesus. They are those who hear and repeat the words about Jesus was crucified, but he promised he'll rise again. They are those who were there at the cross and they heard Jesus say, Father, forgive them for they know not what they are doing. They are those that stood there and heard, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. That is who they are. They are those that were loved by Jesus, told by Jesus that he was in his Father's hands. And nothing could take him from that place. And nothing would take them from that embrace. Nothing at all. And that their life was always going to be renewed. And then the women remembered. The women remembered. And I hope we continue to remember. Quaker scholar Christy Randaza says, The story of the resurrection of Jesus Christ is the foundational memory of Christianity. It is the story that tells us of God's love of humanity 
but it also tells of the undoing of the empire's power. Whatever that empire might be for us, the thing we have given power to, given our lives to, Jesus rising puts the power of that in its tomb. He also went on to write about this. He said, when we remember that story, all perspectives are heard, all voices are heard. It's a grand cacophony of voices, all in common song, where they remember in their own lives the singing of the impossible mystery, Jesus is risen indeed, indeed. So Easter morning, the women ran back to tell the other disciples about what they'd remembered and what they'd found, and they were dismissed for their silliness, for their idle tale. They were dismissed. And then Peter, though, felt a stirring inside in the recesses of his memory, just like Quinta Quinte. It was just enough to send him running to the tomb to see for himself. And he saw it was empty, and he leaves amazed. So, different reactions to what's happening. And we came this morning with our forgetful natures, and some of us, like the women, we're expecting death, and we've been surprised by life. Some of us, like the disciples, have settled in upon the death has the last word, and we are dismissing this as an idle tale. And some of us are like Peter, and we're listening and running and being amazed that there is something up about this Jesus and his love. But despite ourselves and wherever we're at here, we've come. Somehow we've come. And despite ourselves, the gospel telling has stirred our memory, our memory and our remembering. And for some of us, we are remembering. And for all of us, I want us to remember because this is real. This is who we are. We are children of a God who loves us so much and forgives us so much that God will do anything to bring us back. We are recipients of reconciliation and life because of what God does in Jesus. We are spirit-nudged participants in God's universal movement toward love and life for a world, whether we know it or can name it, it is there. That's who we are. So remembering matters this Easter day. And I pray that that remembering will stir you in whatever way it stirs you. Whatever way it stirs you. And we're going to continue to tell that resurrection story together and over and over. And I want to pray with you for that gift this Easter day. So pray with me, please. God of life and renewal, despite our forgetful natures, we hear the song of resurrection this day. We hear Jesus singing boldly of your love that is not bound by death. We hear him belt out with gusto your forgiveness that forgets where we have failed, that forgets where we have wounded others, that forgets where our past has been and leads us into a future. We thank you that we are children of a God who loves our woundedness. This morning we hear the beautiful harmony of renewed relationship between the creator and the created ones and the universe that is and was and will be held together by that God. 
Fill our hearts with this song and may we remember it until the end of time, rising also with the Jesus whose rising we hear this day. Amen. We're going to continue with the hymn, Thine is the Glory. Um, that's number 145 in your green hymnal. Thine is the glory, risen conquering song. Endless is the victory Thou or death has won Angels in bright raiment Roll the stone away Kept the folded grave close Where thy body lay Thine is the glory Risen conquering sun Endless is the victory thou or death hast won. <laughs> Lovingly he greets thee, scatters fear and gloom. Let his church with gladness hymns of triumph sing. For the Lord now liveth, death has lost its sting. Thine is the glory, risen conquering sun. Endless is the victory, thou or death has won. No more we doubt thee, glorious Prince of Life. Life is not without thee, aid us in our strife. Make us more than conquerors through thy deathless love. Bring us safe through Jordan to thy home above. Thine is the glory, risen conquering sun. Endless is the victory thou or death has won. I heard a reverb of my voice come back. Just a little bit shocking. Um, we're going to continue um, with our reception of new members. We're going to say new members because Evie has, wants support. And... Um, we're going to use the Apostles' Creed, and you'll want that in front of you. It's on page 85 in the front of your hymnal. You will have parts, and I will line those out to you, so be prepared. So we are giving thanks for the gift of baptism and for these new people, one with us in the body of Christ, whom we welcome as new and renewed members into the life and ministry of this congregation. And Steve and Evie have been around, but the COVID has thing kept us from getting this done. So I'm going to invite you guys to come forward. Lori, this is your time to come forward too. And I'm going to, I have your work, your line if you need it. So. You're, I just was reminded that you and I both have healing limbs, <laughs> don't we? Don't we? Okay, why don't you come right here, right there. Okay, go ahead. Yeah. I present Evelyn Mabe, who seeks to become a new member of our congregation, and Stephen Mabe, who is a member, renewing his commitment alongside Evelyn. We begin by confessing our faith. So this is when you'll want to have your Apostles' Creed in front of you. So please stand and we'll all um, join in. With the whole church, let us confess our faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. 
I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. In baptism, we are welcomed into the body of Christ and sent to share in the mission of God. We are called to live among God's faithful people, to hear the word of God and share in the Lord's Supper, to proclaim the good news of God in Christ through word and deed, to serve all people, following the example of Jesus, and to strive for justice and peace in all the world. Evelyn and Steve, as sister and brother in Christ, do you intend to continue in the covenant of your baptism among God's people in this place? And if so, say, I do, and I ask God to help and guide me. I do, and I ask. People of God, do you promise to support and pray for these new members in their life in Christ? If so, answer, we do, and we ask God to help and guide us. We do, and we ask God to help and guide us. All right. We're going to line this out because I thought I put it in the bulletin, and I didn't. So let us welcome Evelyn and Steve Mabe sister and brother in Christ, to this community of faith. So I'm going to say a line, and you're going to repeat it back to me, okay? We rejoice with you in the life of baptism. We rejoice with you in the life of baptism. Together we will give thanks and praise to God. Together we will give thanks and praise to God and proclaim the good news to all the world and proclaim the good news to all the world. All right, we are going to be sharing the peace in a little bit, and be sure that when we share the peace, we give um, peace to Evelyn and Steve, and we are happy to have you here. So um, I'm going to let you guys give some applause to them um, while, while, while they're heading back. So you guys can head back to your seats. I have, I have something for you, but go ahead. I'll get. I'll bring it to you afterwards. Okay. Continue with the prayers of the church. On this day of resurrection joy, let us offer our prayers for ourselves, our neighbors, and our world. Renewing God, the good news of your resurrection changed the world. Give church leaders and all the baptized the same excitement as the women at the tomb and inspire us to share your abundant life. Merciful God, Receive our prayer. Sustaining God, your creation abounds with signs of new life in budding trees and newborn creatures. Provide fertile soil, ample sunlight, and nourishing rain for the growth of plants, and provide farmers with safety in this approaching planting season. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Sheltering God, strengthen and sustain all who support vulnerable people across the world. Empower government agencies and international organizations that provide for refugees and migrants forced to leave their homelands. We especially think of those in the Ukraine at this time, those who have left their homeland. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Encouraging God, you do a new thing among us. We pray for those gripped by fear and anxiety or who suffer in any way. We especially think of today those who are 
in long recovery processes and going through treatments. Um, we pray for those who are preparing for surgery to be healed. We pray for those who um, are grieving this day because it's first Easter without loved ones. We pray for all of these and all other folks whose cares and concerns we carry in our hearts. Send us as your healing presence to places of hunger, pain, illness, or overwhelming sorrow. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Surprising God, you offer endless ways for us to delight in your grace. Give this community of faith a sense of joy and wonder in exploring new avenues of faith formation, worship, and discipleship. Merciful God, Receive our prayer. Resurrecting God, you make us alive in Christ. Thank you for blessing us with faithful witnesses who now rest in you. Merciful God, receive our prayer. We offer to you these petitions and those we carry in our hearts, trusting in your abundant and ever-present mercy. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Share peace with one another. Share welcome with Evie and Steve. And um, I will seat you in a bit. So as long as you and as comfortable as you are able. <clears throat> peace be with you, Marianne. Peace, Paul. <laughs> Hi, guys. Peace be with you. Peace, peace. Peace, Gary. Oh, you didn't call me Gary? No. Okay. <laughs> From the back. There was this from the back. All right. Okay. Um, when you are ready, you may be seated, and we are going to receive the offering. Um, there should be sanitizer in your pews if you feel like you need to use it and um, look around. This stuff is also sanitizer, spray stuff. Don't spray each other. Where's our helpers for Michael? I think we need you to help with this. Oh, Sadie's gonna help too. Okay, you girls can help at the opposite end. Sadie, why don't you go over there? Oh, okay. Uh, we'll ha use you big boys here. that we may be fed with the bread of life. Gather the hopes and dreams of all, unite them with the prayers we offer. Pray 
grace our table with your presence and give us a foretaste of the feast to come. Let us pray. Living God, you gather the wolf and the lamb to feed together in your peaceable reign, and you welcome us all at your table. Reach out to us through this meal and show us your wounded and risen body that we may be nourished and believe in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. We continue on page 88 in the front of your green hymnal or in your digital bulletin. So I say to you, the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places Give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of our Savior, Jesus Christ. The true Paschal Lamb who gave himself to take away our sin, who in dying has destroyed death and in rising has brought us to eternal life. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth, and sea and all their creatures, with angels and archangels, with cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, Lord God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. On the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, broke it, gave thanks, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, Jesus took the cup and gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. It's shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, we ask what... The criminal asked, who was by you on the cross, Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The risen Christ dwells with us here. And all who are hungry and all who are thirsty, come. You may be seated. We are communing continuously today. And those all are welcome at our communion table. And We'll start with this side, um, and I'm our, you're an assistant. I'm going to have Paul please be our, little, our usher. And the second service, we were going with who was here. And um, so we'll commune our assistants first, and then we will come forward. So I got you two. Start with her. She already communed. The body of Christ given for you body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. We're going to start on this side.
the body of Christ given for you.
the body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen you and keep you in his grace unto life eternal. Go in peace. Let's pray. We give you thanks, generous God, for in this bread and cup, we have tasted the new heaven and earth where hunger and thirst are no more. Send us from this table as witnesses to the resurrection that through our lives, all may know life in Jesus' name. Amen. Now may God, the author of life, Christ, the living cornerstone, and the life-giving spirit of adoption, bless you now and forever. Amen. We are, our final hymn is Christ is Risen, Alleluia. We're singing verses 1, 3, and 4, and that's number 131 in your green hymnal, green hymnal. <clears throat> we go forth remembering our purpose as the living servants of God go in peace to live and share the gospel of Jesus Christ through love and service to all <laughs>